hello everyone so as you can see over here so this was our previous class we had basically seen the definition of environment why we should study the environmental studies so what are the basic things so all those things so environmentalism was done by Rachel Green she published a book called Sun and Springs so this this is just a you know it's been a while we had taken this class so I'm just browsing up with the or refreshing your mind with the previously covered syllabus so fine so I hope all these things are clear for you right so we'll continue with the class so now I had asked some questions when there is a live class we can have some interactive session but as of now we can't have it so for that and also for the purpose of attendance mm, I will share a quiz right in the Google form and whatever I have taught in this recorded class I will just ask a few questions in that quiz so that will be shared uh, tomorrow that is if today is Tuesday today at 3 p.m. right so at 3 p.m. I will share it 10 minutes I will give the time to answer the questions and if you don't answer you will not get the attendance right so okay so up till here up till the 19th slide we had completed in the last class so we will come to the 9 20th slide so classification of ecosystem so basically there are two types of ecosystem first one is terrestrial second one is aquatic terrestrial are the one for example we can take ourselves which are in the land forest grassland desert mountain etc so they are all terrestrial and the people or the organisms which live on these terrestrial areas will make up the terrestrial ecosystem next aquatic that is one in the water so running water, standing water, marine, all these things have an ecosystem. It is mainly known as aquatic ecosystem. Next biome and ecosystem. So we will see what do you mean by biome and how does it relate to ecosystem. Bio, biome can be defined as various similar ecosystems throughout the world together. Okay. So ecosystem is the one where people live in and biome is the one it is the clusters of various ecosystems that's all. So biome is a large area with smaller similar flora fauna and microorganisms. So they are mainly a large area with similar plants animals and microorganisms. I hope you know what is flora fauna means. Yes. Yes. So the major biomes are mountains, forests, marine, island, deserts, grasslands, savanna, etc. So energy flows through the ecosystem in the form of carbon-carbon bonds. Carbon-carbon bond rupture makes possible the formation of carbon dioxide. So there is a very small amount of carbon dioxide which is present in, in our atmosphere. I think it is 0.038% out of 100% in the atmosphere okay 72 percent is uh, made up of uh, 72 to 73 it is made up of nitrogen 21 percent it is oxygen it was not previously as i had uh, showed you the video where uh, you know uh, plants produce oxygen and they let out the excess oxygen so millions of years ago the amount of oxygen was less less than 21 percent now it is 21% by which we are sustaining our life so next inorganic nutrient will be usually in the form of essential animal elements such as calcium sodium iron and zinc so these are essential but they are inorganic without these also an organism cannot survive next primary units of an ecosystem so what is the primary unit of an ecosystem so first thing is food chain so these are the uh, basic primary units of a 
ecosystem to sustain so what do we need it to survive food so food chain will come into picture so it is the path of food from a given consumer back to producer so producers are the one such as plants they will produce the food uh, with the help of what with the help of sunlight and also with the help of chloroform that is the pigment and these will be taken up by animals such as mouse and sorry not mouse herbivorous animals such as you know a uh, rabbit or a deer or there are n number of herbivorous animal uh, example for herbivorous animals and these herbivorous animals will be taken up by carnivorous animals such as hyenas fox and also some of the animals carnivorous animals itself it will be eaten up by higher carnivorous animals such as you know uh, tigers or lion if we go to the aquatic system it will be a uh, shark so in that way so they will die those higher order carnivorous animals will die they will get decomposed as a result of decomposition they will go back to the producers itself such as uh, by becoming manure so it is always a cycle so this chain has to go on and the ecosystem has to sustain so that we can sustain right so we can take an a uh, very basic example grass grass will be eaten up by grasshopper and grasshopper will be taken up by a carnivorous animal a mouse is also technically an omnivorous so well it's fine so mouse it will be taken up by carnivorous animal that is smaller carnivorous next uh, slightly larger than that that will be snake mouse will be eaten up by snake and snake will be next eaten up by hawk hawk is nothing but uh, you know a eagle a type of eagle so here in the food chain there are mainly basic three categories so first one is the predator chain so the one which kills it is called as the predator chain so start it starts basically from plant base and goes from smaller to larger animal right next the parasitic chain goes from larger to smaller organism so parasites are the one which uh, directly rely on the host so they can't produce they can't process their own food they they take the help of the host and they take all the nutrients of the host they are parasites so as small as they are it will be easier for the parasite to get attached with the host right so in this food chain in the parasitic food chain the organisms will go smaller and smaller next saprophytic chain so it mainly goes from dead matter to microorganism so as we can see over here the there is a a phenomenon which is going on uh, it can be kind of you know uh, uh, not very comfortable for you to listen but it still when any animal dies as soon as it dies there will be a uh, number of n number of processes happening such as flies will come and it will uh, halt on the nose and eyes part of an animal and it will start laying eggs and there will be maggots and as soon as this happens it is a continuous process and decomposition starts place as soon as it is dead so there is no time for the nature to you know keep you in the state of or keep a organism in the state of dead as soon as as it is dead the nature says well fine next uh, let's decompose it why it has to decompose because that decomposition will in turn help for the survival of the plants so it will become manure it will become very good fertilizer natural fertilizer and it will be taken up by the soil and it will get the nutrients from the animal so this is cycle producer consumer consumer will die and decomposer and the cycle goes on and so on and so forth next presence of many food chains in the environment produces a food web so as you can see over here one animal is not taken up by only a single consumer so many food chains make up a food web there are many various ways 
इट शुडेंट बी दैट ए ग्रास शुड बी टेकन अप बाय ग्रास होपर इट सेल्फ नो इट कैन बी टेकन अप बाय एनी थिंग इट कैन बी टेकन अप बाय काउ इट कैन बी टेकन अप बाय गोट इट कैन टेकन अप बाय एनी थिंग मैन एनी थिंग सो ऑल दीज फूड चेंज विल मेक अप एन फूड वेब फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू कैन सी ओ हियर राइट सो प्लांट्स इट विल बी टेकन अप बाय रैबिट रैबिट विल बी ईटन अप बाय फॉक्स ऑल्सो माउस विल ऑल्सो बी ईटन अप बाय फॉक्स so fox will be again eaten up by some other animal so not only rabbit or mouse or you know tit mouse or snake whatever it is there it will be taken up by a higher carnivorous animal but that carnivorous animal whichever is there it is not the same there are n number of food chains so all these n number of food chains make up an food web so ecological pyramids we will, uh, pyramids will go to the next topic that is charles alton in 1927 a british ecologist developed this concept what is a ecological pyramid basically if you can say food chain is a horizontal chain food pyramid uh, is a or ecological pyramid is a food chain which is going in upward direction so as the number of you know uh, clusters or trough pick levels increases the number of animals which ever are there it will decrease right we will come back to it in the next slides so we will see what is written over here that is it involves the arrangement of tropic levels right at each tropic level number of organisms will decrease right in the level of uh, consumers first thing which is eaten up that is the producers plants will be eaten up by many number of animals there are many vegetarian or herbivorous animals right but as next uh, trophic level if we go the number of animals or carnivorous animals which eat these herbivorous animals will be certain amount and if we go to next trophic level trophic level we can see that the number of animals which eats these carnivorous animals which had eaten the herbivorous animal will be even less so as you can see over here a diagram that shows a general ecological pyramid as you can see in the uh, figure given an environment having systematic food chains or food webs or ecological pyramids without any imbalance or disturbances is said to be an balanced ecosystem so i will just zoom in over here you can see this right so primary producers primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary consumers and in the final that is the main consumers that is the tigers or uh, a lion or we can again take the example of shark so as you can see over here there is energy stored as biomass and here we can say it is not coming in the pyramid that is the decomposers so on these animals it take up and as you can see over here the number of animals is decreasing right also heat is also uh, generated and it is evolved so all these animals whichever are over here so all these animals it will be uh, it will die one day so it will be converted as decomposers and this will be again taken up by the producers itself right so that is what uh, you know uh, ecological pyramid is all about so next coming to the topic of aquatic system we had uh, till now we had only seen the terrestrial ecosystem will come to aquatic system so three main ecological categories first one is planktons next one is nectons third one is bentons so planktons are the one which are very small free floating organisms which are in the aquatic ecosystem nectons are slightly more larger and we can see with see them in the naked eyes so benthos is the abyssal organisms right so human activities so what are we mainly doing we will come to the part this is very important so human activities have the capacity to alter the ecosystem in ways that threaten the very processes and components upon which humans depend 
so we are the villain of our own story so humans for their greed to make the money they will uh, for example we can take it as the landslide which is happening in madikeri right so what is mainly happening over there is it is mainly a farmland uh, people mainly grow a uh, coffee and tea etc etc so uh, there are certain uh, i i don't want to target anyone but there are certain people who who are into real estate business who want to do some business in the landing so what they do is they deforest the whole area which is covered with plants and trees and these plants and trees are the main thing to hold the soil when it rains so once these uh, trees are gone there are no roots so human activity which is leading to suffering to humans itself so they cut all the trees there is a wide area for development of real estates but as a result there is no strength for the soil to hold itself so when it rains there will be landslide it would have been avoided if there are more and more number of trees because roots have the capacity to hold the soil together there will be less erosion so human activities or we the humans are very bad for the earth, uh, as in general so human activities may be listed as the process of exhausting fossil fuels so my suggestion or my humble request for you people whoever are listening is that whenever there is a public transport please try to use it to its maximum efficiency because one thing it will conserve the fossil fuel second thing it will decrease the traffic even though you have scooter or a car or a bike uh, yes it is a kind of luxury it is a kind of comfort but when we have to think in a global level we have to use sometimes public transport because for example if you come back to college if you do carpooling or scooter pooling it's fine but if you are only one who is coming with a car it's not really necessary i would just recommend come in a bus right uh, so in this covid pandemic also that is also a reason but once all this covid is gone please try to inculcate even though if you have your own vehicle please come in a college bus so that it will be good for the environment because environment is the one where we live in right okay so we will go to the next point almost more than half of earth's land has been transformed so when it it has been cut uh, the vegetative uh, growth has been cut to a major extent next more than half of accessible water has been consumed so mainly we have in the ice caps ground water and in the rivers so more than half it has been you know consumed or most of them is polluted we can't drink sea water right so that is the case so also because of the human activities let's go to the next point so also because of the human activities there is increase in greenhouse gases concentration so because of greenhouse gases concentration there is a climate change rather than a uh, rainy season in mangalore itself we can see happening in june july august now it is happening in july august september so it's all a part of climate change okay we are experiencing the climate change right now next marine and terrestrial areas including fisheries have been exploited up to a certain level we can take up the resources when does exploitation come when there is a saturation limit and we take still want to take something else we still want resources so that is not good so that is what is exploitation so there is a need of creation of environmental awareness among the public and the students public we can do by doing seminars and all but how many are interested but students you are the next generation people you are the future of the nation 
at least you have to know whatever is done is done we can't do anything but now on we have to uh, do our job in protecting the environment so scientific and engineering research is also playing an important role in understanding and protecting the environment so there is a channel called as tech insider or business insider so in the youtube itself so you can go and search as 25 inventions which are saving earth i am not sure if it is 25 or not 12 13 i guess so so in 20 something you you just type it as type in the keywords as 25 inventions that are saving earth tech insider so you can see there are a lot of number of scientific research which has been going on from the past which are actually saving the earth right now as we speak all these things as a whole when it comes to the mass it will take some time but there are uh, you know prototypes of the things which save the earth you can also take up these kinds of project itself in your final semester or in the final year so some environmental moments are chipko moment namada bachao and save water right so i just wanted to say over here in the activities been listed as more than half of accessible water has been consumed right so what can we do next so ab jo ho gaya wo ho gaya next kya karna hai so the thing is uh, there is a subject from the civil department itself uh, it is known as uh, water resource management so we we dive into this topic in a very deep level to how to save the water which is available right now so what can be done what shouldn't be done all those things water resource management so uh, as you can see in this youtube channel itself there is a playlist of water resource management from module number 2 which i had engaged so in the next sem that is in the 6th sem you will have an open elective in the civil department itself that is the water resource management people who are interested in can take up that subject so we will get back that is a chipko moment narmada bachao and save water so chipko moment narmada bachao all these things we will not go in details but these are some of the environmental moments which had an impact so chip comment is nothing but the people wanted to construct an industry or something and uh, the people of that area uh, didn't want the trees to be cut so they went and they hugged the tree so they became chipko and um, so on and so forth it became a chip moment but as these people hugged the trees the people who wanted to cut the trees were stopped right it was a great moment and many trees were saved that day that was a great win for the environment right so next it is the uh, world environment day it is celebrated on 5th of june let us celebrate it grand next year 2021 maybe also earth day is celebrated on april 22nd so these are the things you have to uh, keep in mind because environment has to sustain next one more thing uh, is that uh, ozone day is also celebrated on 16th september okay today it is 14th maybe when you're watching it is 15th or so so 16th september is celebrated as ozone day so i'll just go to one more slide uh, right Yeah, so this is the next slide so environment environment is defined as something that surrounds us right so environment consists of three domains they are gaseous that is air atmosphere liquid hydrosphere and solid that is lithosphere so these three domains meet and common interface on the surface of earth so this interface of the combination of everything is known as biosphere right next biosphere is essentially dependent on the exchange of matter and energy that takes place continuously amongst the 
land surfaces, water bodies and atmosphere. So all these things, gaseous, liquid and land, all these are very dynamic and very interdependent and they are correlated with each other and all these are making the ecosystem or trying to have an balanced ecosystem. So as you can see over here, there is a wonderful diagram, uh, you know, uh, showing the biosphere part, air, water, land. So shaded area mainly represents the biosphere. So that beautiful diagram like a rangoli, it is the biosphere. So components of environment are atmosphere, lithosphere, hydrosphere and biosphere. So mainly dry air contains by volume if you can say 78.9% of nitrogen, 21% of oxygen, 0.93% of argon and 0.038% of carbon dioxide. So as you can see over here, I told you right, maybe 0 0.038, yeah it was correct. So 0.38% of carbon dioxide, that is a very very small amount of thing if we consider 100% of air but what is the effect that is making by the carbon dioxide, just think about it, it is horrible right and also small amount of other gases are also there such as xenon and all, they are all inert gases. So as you can see over here 78% or 79% is made up of nitrogen, 21% is oxygen. So this was not so much millions of years ago. We need to thank the plants. They have given the amount of oxygen as 20% for us to survive. Right? So coming to the next point that is the natural resources. So nature provides materials or resources for sustenance of life on earth. Just a second. Yeah, so natural resources, uh, what are the resources that are available by the nature given to us? So what is there? air is there, land is there. There are many more renewable and non-renewable resources so we will dive deep into it. So nature provides materials or resources for sustenance of life on earth for plants, animals and man which are known as natural resources. Examples are water, air, soil, forest and minerals etc. So there are mainly two categories of natural resources, very easy, renewable resources, non-renewable resources. So what are renewable resources? These can be recycled and regenerated within a given span of time. So wind energy, solar energy, biomass, hydropower, etc. So as you can see over here, wind energy, it can be generated again, right, with the tidals and all. Uh, as until the earth is moving there will be wind solar energy until sun is there there will be solar energy biomass as as uh, you know until we produce waste there will be a biomass so biomass is nothing but the gas methane gas which are is produced from the waste solid waste of humans and other animals so there is a uh, biogas plant in sjec also you can take a look at that right so hydropower uh, until there is water there will be hydropower so dams and all there, there are the direct examples the kinetic energy of water falling from a height it in turn will rotate the turbine so the turbine will generate the energy so it is hydropower power from water Next is non-renewable resources, these cannot be regenerated, example fossil fuels such as coal, petroleum etc. So technically speaking, very technically speaking, fossil fuels can also be rejuvenated, okay? they can also be renewed but it will take millions of years. So if it is millions of years, what is the use for us, right? 
so we will generally term it as non renewable resources right so you should always see that it has to be recycled so that's why even in the sjc we had opted for uh, for example in the tedx and all we had opted for the gunny bags not the plastic bags so one thing is that they are they pollute the environment and second thing is that uh, you know the gunny bags or the jute bags are uh, recyclable and they don't cause much harm towards the environment so water resources useful to humans and all living beings agricultural industrial household recreational environmental activities so all the things if you say i will not i will live without water you can't live without water so water is very very essential virtually all of these require fresh water even in the mixing of concrete we want portable water itself so now we will pinpoint to the point that how much we have water that can be consumed by us so the thing is first thing the united nations of water conference reports as 97% of water earth's water supply is in ocean so it is the earth our earth is a blue planet why is it called as blue planet because most of the part is water but what is the use of water which we can't drink right so 97% of earth's water is in ocean and out of that out of 100% remaining 3% is fresh water 2.3% is again locked in polar ice cap so we can't go to antarctica to drink water right so we it's not easily accessible next the balance point 7% is available as fresh water but see over here but the bulk of it that is 0.66% is again in ground water so how much do we have 0.03% is accessible to us as fresh water so let that sink in just 0.03% of fresh water is available for us so fresh water is however a renewable resource right there is hydrological cycle so it is a renewable resource yet world supply of clean fresh water is steadily decreasing because of the pollution which is happening right now and also because of the climate change so we have to change not change the climate water is an indispensable commodity of life so we can't live without it water occurs in three phases solid liquid and gaseous solid phase is the one we can see in ice caps liquid phase water or uh, which we drink gaseous is the one it is mainly helpful for the respiration for the plants for the transpiration so liquid phase is vital for the existence of life gaseous phase is important for respiration in organisms so this is very very important slide over here that is the parameters of water quality standards in india right so 10800 2012 iso standards ph 6.5 to 8.5 should be there not 7 it is neutral if you drink a ph a water which is having 7 you will vomit do of 4 to 6 chloride or sulfate of 250 ppm calcium of 100 ppm ppm is nothing but mg per liter milligram per liter so iron 0.3 mg per liter let this 0.05 mg per liter that is the permissible limit okay not the desirable limit permissible limit and so on and so forth you can see the table so as you can see over here in the indian water quality standards nearly there are 32 to 35 i am not sure 32 or 35 so around 32 we can say uh standards are taken into consider for the consumption of water by the humans in india but in singapore and all the number of uh, standards that is mainly taken up is 132 
okay let that sink into so people over singapore or in foreign countries like america and all the number of parameters checked is mainly 132 or as in india it is just 35 or 32 i think in american doll it is 145 that's why they are so confident to drink the water which comes in the tap water they directly drink it not like india right so we can't directly drink the water in india which is coming in the taps so these are the parameters let's come back let's be in india itself so this is how it is these are the main parameters which you have to keep in mind so hydrological cycle so in the hydrological cycle there are mainly more four things that is first one is evaporation after that it is the condensation after con- condensation it is the uh you know precipitation after precipitation it is the runoff runoff and storage so evaporation condensation precipitation after precipitation we have runoff after runoff it is the storage so there are the main points okay five it will be right so you can just uh, take a look at this beautiful picture over here you can pause the video and look at this photo of hydrological cycle so there are two types of water cycle mainly global water cycle and biological water cycle so global water cycle is the one which never involves life so water evaporates from sea lakes and rivers condensation of vapor leads to precipitation precipitation is nothing but rainfall in form of rain snow hail storm right so most of the rain water percolates into the soil becomes a part of water table and seeps into the ocean so the soil whichever is there it acts like a sponge and in mangalore it is mainly made up of laterite soil and the pores are very high so whatever whatever the water is coming in or getting into the soil it will be taken up by the uh, you know laterite soil and there is a huge amount of ground water which is available right so if there are pores the water will seep in through and it will be stored in the aquifers so what do you mean by aquifers it is the area where the ground water is mainly stored stored that is the hollow part which is under the ground so so that is what how it is stored in ground water unconfined and confined aquifers also there let's not go too much deep into it so most of the rain water percolates into the soil and becomes a part of water table and seeps into the ocean and also the one which does not percolate it will be uh, it will become as runoff okay runoff it, it will also eventually it will reach rivers and also oceans so surface rain water and water formed by melting of ice snowfall snow flow into river and finally joins into the sea so next type of water cycle is biological water cycle biological water cycle in the last it will join into the global water cycle so in the biological water cycle is mainly involves the entry of water into living beings once you have drink the drank the water it becomes a part of biological water cycle right next aquatic organisms take water from their surroundings so however they are in the you know ocean itself or river itself there are fresh water fish and all aquatic animals and you know salt water aquatic animals so they have water around them and they take water as they are pleased plants absorb water from soil through their roots animals obtain water from plants they consume or take in water directly from different water bodies so always stay hydrated animals release water into the atmosphere by respiration in form of vapors a large part of water is given back to nature by plants as they lose most absorbed water by the process of transpiration so water vapor thus form results in formation of clouds followed by rain and so enters the global water cycle thus there is a there is always 
an exchange of water between global water cycle and biological water cycle so up till here i have completed for mechanical section and ec a and b i guess so the syllabus part i will be having an uniform completion of it every week so this time with the unprecedented circumstances we should have we couldn't have a live class no worries please uh, if you are watching this recorded video please see that attendance is very compulsory and google form is share, will be shared uh, soon and also whoever answers the google form quiz they will be given attendance only 10 minutes it will be open after that i will not accept any answer so if you don't answer it within 10 minutes of course from 3 to 310 on tuesday that is um you know 15th of september you will not get the attendance of this class right so thank you so much we'll meet hopefully in the next live class